I was born in Hilldale, Utah, which is the Utah side of Colorado City. I was born a seventh generation from an old woman. Every generation from Joseph Smith's day to mine has lived with me. I was born in a fundamentalist group. I was born and raised in the Kingston group. Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith started it, like a plural marriage. The principle of true Mormonism. Pure Mormonism. Original Mormonism. The highest principle of the gospel is plural celestial marriage. It was essential to their salvation. That's what we were taught. As an attorney, I reviewed the evidence. There is no evidence admissible in court to prove Smith practiced or promoted harem style polygamy. All evidence produced years after the death of Smith. No joke, with few exceptions, all evidence is unreliable. Testimony by biased, self-serving, practicing Utah polygamists produced years after Smith's death. This is an article written by the Utah Mormon Church in 2013. It states plural mar marriage in Kirtland and Nauvoo. The beginnings of plural marriage in the church, he, referring to the Utah Mormon Church. The revelation on plural marriage was not written down until 1843, but in early verses suggest that part of, the, of it emerged from Joseph Smith's study of the Old Testament in 1831. That is, 12 years previous, this church now today in 2013 claimed that Joseph Smith was speaking about it in 1831. And what do they use as their evidence? We'll find out. Okay, people who knew Joseph Smith well later stated he received the revelation about that time. Okay, let's go down. Do they have, does the Mormon church produce any evidence? Number one, that... The revelation was written down in 1843, which is could be a year or could be within six months before Smith's death. Very convenient for them that it happened within the year that Smith was assassinated. But let's look down at their evidence. Footnote. Okay. The evidence that Joseph Smith was practicing or stated that plural marriage was of God as early as 1831 is Andrew Jensen's plural marriage historical record written May 1887. My goodness, that's a good 40 years after the death of Smith. And then a report of Elder Orson Pratt and Joseph F. Smith in the Millennial Star in 1878. Huh. Again, 34 years after Smith's death. And then they cite as a reference, New Light of Old Hypothesis on Ohio's Origins, and that's 18, 1978. Well, that's clearly a, cent a century after Smith's death. This is what you call inadmissible hearsay evidence, unsubstantiated by any exception, such as a business record or such as a revelation. This is what you call inadmissible hearsay evidence unsupported by any hearsay exception, such as a business record written at the same time, such as minutes of a meeting or minutes of a uh, business uh, meeting or a revelation or several people that can document that this occurred. And Joseph Smith wrote the revelation as early as 1843. Nothing. They produce, this document produces nothing. Then they use as an additional source the Doctrine and Covenants, 132, okay, which basically is the revelation. However, this revelation was only produced seven years in 1852 by Brigham Young. Now, if this 
Section 132, calling for plural marriage, was written by Joseph Smith as early as 1843, as witnessed by many people 40, 50 years after. Why was this document not produced at the time Brigham Young introduced polygamy in Nauvoo immediately upon the assassination of Joseph Smith? This document was not produced in support of any polygamy practiced by Brigham Young and the Quorum of the Twelve at the time they practiced and married multiple wives, which occurred in 1844 to 1846 after the death of Brigham of Joseph Smith in Nauvoo. John D. Lee, the adopted son and Danite and protector of Joseph Smith, testifies in his particular biographies that he never witnessed Joseph Smith ever state he believed in polygamy or that polygamy was ordained of God. What John D. Lee writes is he heard rumors. He heard rumors. He did not hear anybody directly related to Joseph Smith state at any time that, that Joseph Smith supported polygamy. And in fact, John D. Lee states, I arrived in Nauvoo with only one wife. By the time I left Nauvoo, I had nine wives, all married by Brigham Young, all after the death of Joseph Smith. If Here is a scholar. This is a book published by the Hills, Brian Hill and Laura Hill, and it is dedicated to uh, discovering and outlining and documenting Joseph Smith's views on polygamy. And it was published, I believe, in 2013, and it does a good job, no, excuse me, 2015, supposedly it does a good job, as many have said, in identifying the roots of uh, polygamy in the Mormon Utah Mormon Church. Brian Hale and Laura Hale, in their book on Joseph Smith's polygamy, write, There is only one known document by Joseph Smith specifically discussing the subject of polygamy. Understand that? Only one specific document. His revelation recorded on July 12, 1843, now Doctrine and Covenants, Section 132. In addition, no contemporary records of his teachings have ever been found except for a few entries in the journal of the clerk of William Clayton. Consequently, Consequently, the primary source of reliable information concerning Joseph Smith's polygamy comes from later recollections written by those in Nauvoo who were personally involved. Some of the available manuscripts contain brief references of polygamy. They are found in longer autobiographical sketches, while others constitute only reminiscences of distinct plural marriage events that occurred in 1840. Okay. This is very concise and precise by someone who has studied Joseph Smith's polygamy and believes Joseph Smith practiced polygamy. But he himself, the Hales, his wife, and he have to admit there is scant evidence that there is only one section, section 132 of the Doctrine and Covenants, well, as we have previously discussed, that was discovered, discovered conveniently, Oh, seven, eight years after the death of Joseph Smith and used only to promote polygamy. So let's return to Joseph Smith's polygamy written by Brian H. Hale and Laura Hale. This is considered the best scholarly work to date, accumulating all the evidence in support of Joseph Smith was practicing harem style polygamy and as we have seen, and there is none. There is absolutely no documentary evidence supporting the notion that Joseph Smith practiced harem polygamy during his lifetime. Brian Hale and Emma Hale state this and have to admit it, even though they support the notion that Joseph Smith practiced polygamy. And as you can see, the contents of it deals with reasons for practicing plural marriage, a new and everlasting covenant. Polygamy is commanded, it says, different marriage ceilings, different marriage durations. And that's the interesting thing, is marriage ceilings. And it's my contention, and you will uh, see through 
context of the sealing ordinance that sealings and marriage are not synonymous and do not equal each other. They are two different rituals. And Joseph Smith appears to have authorized sealings, which some have said this is the adoption of family units in the celestial kingdom. But marriage for time, which is on this earth, and eternity in heaven, in which allows a man to practice harem-type polygamy and does not allow a woman equal status, was not practiced by Joseph Smith. In fact, it has been completely confused because Joseph Smith's statements all through his life was to denounce the, the object and the ritual of harem polygamy. And this was being pressured upon him by the Quorum of the Twelve, led by Brigham Young and the rest of the Twelve, who were not original Mormons. They converted from the Campbellite uh, denomination with Sidney Rigdon. And I will show you how Alexander Campbell, Sidney Rigdon's mentor, was a British asset. And when Joseph Smith was assassinated, he was gleeful. Textual. As John D. Lee, a Danite, an adopted son of Brigham Young, and a personal guard for Joseph Smith reported in his diary and his autobiography. He entered Nauvoo with only one wife, and by the time he left, two years after Joseph Smith's death, he had nine wives. He indicates that he never saw Joseph Smith ever marry anybody or preach polygamy. John Dealey reports he only heard rumors. And who would he have heard those rumors from? Well, most likely the Quorum of the Twelve and his adopted father, Brigham Young, and Parley Pratt, and William Law, and all the Quorum of the Twelve that instantly, on the death of Smith, instantly, automatically, started marrying women furiously. Over two year period, John D. Lee had been married to nine women. And how many Brigham Young had been many, married to? I'm not gonna even count them because Brigham Young supposedly also married Joseph Smith's plural wives. So they're claiming Joseph Smith practiced plural wifery while he was married, but was needed to keep it secret but immediately on Smith's death, it's an open, open practice. The harem was the ultimate symbol. The Ottoman Imperial Harem. The Imperial Harem of the Ottoman Empire was the Ottoman Sultan's Harem, composed of wives, servants, both male, female, and eunuchs, female relatives, and the Sultan's concubines occupying a secluded portion of the Ottoman imperial household. The harem was the ultimate symbol of the Sultan's power. His ownership of women, mostly slaves, was a sign of wealth, power, and sexual prowess. The institution was introduced in the Turkish society with the adoption of Islam, under the influence of the Arab Caliphate, which the Ottomans emulated. To ensure the obedience of women, many of them were brought and kept into slavery. For the perpetuation and service of the Ottoman dynasty, beautiful and intelligent slave girls were either captured in war, recruited within the empire, or, pro or procured from neighboring countries to become the imperial court ladies. A word de uh, derived from Turkish Oda meaning chamber. These were the chamber maidens, thus connecting Obelisk, to mean chamber girl or attendant, was not a term synonymous with concubine. However, in Western usage, the term has come to refer specifically to harem concubine. Role of the eunuchs. At Topaki Palace, which I have visited, at the court of the Ottoman sultans, the harem staff included eunuchs. These were Nilotic slaves captured in the Nile vicinity. The castrated servicemen in the Muslim and Turkish states in the Middle Ages were recruited to serve in the palace from the times of the Sultan Mehmed, very close to Muhammad, onwards. The chief black eunuch, eunuch was sometimes considered second only to the Grand Vizier, head of the imperial government, but often working in his own palace or even away. On military campaigns, 
in the confidence of the Sultan. Meet John C. Bennett. John C. Bennett arrived in Nauvoo about seven, September 1814 and became the mayor of Nauvoo, a very influential pol politician, since Bennett had persuaded the entire Illinois legislature to 100% grant Nauvoo an independent charter, effectively making Nauvoo a nation within the state of Illinois, an independent state within a state. And as such, no other state could extradite Joseph Smith because Nauvoo had its own independent charter, independent militia, and even the Illinois governor could not extradite Smith to Missouri. So basically, Smith was safe and protected in Nauvoo, but also one could say that perhaps Smith was imprisoned in Nauvoo because he could not leave the small city-state of Nauvoo while all the other um, Quorum of the Twelve gallivanted around going to England, going and uh, gathering saints, ha having financed by um, oligarchs in England and bringing thousands of saints back to Nauvoo. With what purpose? We shall see. Certainly not to have Joseph Smith lead these new saints to Salt Lake because Joseph Smith was assassinated before he ever had the opportunity to leave Nauvoo. One might even speculate that knowing that the saints were going to follow Joseph Smith and they were loyal to jo Joseph Smith, the Quorum of the Twelve decided to leave Joseph Smith somewhat imprisoned in Nauvoo, go to uh, England and gather and convert and finance and pay people to join the Mormon Church to have a following of Brigham Young to take out to Utah. So, okay. meet John C. Bennett. Oliver Olney penned the earliest assessment on June 18th of 1842. If Bennett had not moved quite so fast, all would have been well. Only himself, he's referring to Bennett's particular brand of polygamy, only himself was also excommunicated, as was Bennett, when they were caught practicing polygamy. And when were they excommunicated? In March 17, 1842, by Joseph Smith and the Relief Society. And this was when they discovered that John C. Bennett and Mr. Olney was practicing in secret polygamy. So let's go on to see what other of these fine current Mormon men believe, how wonderful this John C. Bennett is for practicing in secret and uh, promising pe women that he would marry them when he didn't and then that perhaps could get abortions if they happened to get pregnant. This is what Bennett was accused of. So these modern Mormon scholars say the following. T.B.H. Stenhouse wrote, Many even of the good Mormons have always believed that Joseph taught Bennett of the proposed introduction of polygamy, but Bennett ran ahead of his teacher and introduced free loveism in the broadest sense. And he wrote that in the 1870s, a good 30 years after uh, Smith's death, and while Bennett was practicing openly uh, polygamy in the new break-off Rigdonite community of Sidney Rigdon's polygamous Mormon sect. So let's go on. Since then, other influential historians have taken the same position that, for example, Robert Bruce Flanders labeled Bennett a promiscuous and lascivious man, asserting that he stumbled onto a developing religious principle that he may have apparently distorted to aid and justify himself in his amours. Flanders added, just who took the first step, Bennett or Joseph Smith, or when, it is impossible to determine from a reliable source. So right here he's saying, as far as he can tell at the time of his writing, he doesn't know if Joseph Smith was practicing polygamy or if Bennett started practicing a strange harem-like form of polygamy first. Lawrence, let's move on. Lawrence Foster also speculates on the relationship between the two men. He felt that Joseph had taken Joseph John C. Bennett into his full confidence about polygamy. In his book, based on his dissertation, Foster went into more detail. Bennett's indiscretions and excesses threatened the legitimate development of polygamy. Joseph Smith was faced with a dilemma in trying to deal with Bennett. The man knew too much, he knew too much, to be similarly thrown out. Yet his indiscretions were so great that if he were not thrown out, the lid would blow off, eventually anyway. 
Bennett never understood what Joseph Smith was really trying to do. His account of polygamy is like a reflection of the funhouse mirror, grotesquely elongated or distorted its different directions, although the original object reflected did in fact exist. No citation for that. All he knows is that Bennett was accused of practicing openly, uh, practicing in secret polygamy, and Bennett was excommunicated and exiled for it in 1842, two years before Smith's assassination. Then a good Richard Van Wagner also embraces the view. Much of what Bennett wrote about Mormonism's inner circles was factual. No citation again. How does he know it's factual? I don't know how he knows it's factual, because as we've seen, the scholar that scholar, uh, Mr. Hale and Mrs. Hale, both state there is scant direct evidence or any documentary evidence that Smith ever practiced harem polygamy. But anyway, let's move on. Um, as a member of the first president, he was clearly in a privileged position to witness much of Joseph's personal behavior. Well, I don't know. According to certain scholars, William C. Bennett was not liked that much by Joseph Smith, and Joseph Smith did not include him in many meetings. And in fact, it will show that Joseph Probably, more probably than not, because of Bennett's political affiliation in getting the charter for Nauvoo as an independent state within the state of Illinois. And then he was made mayor of this state within a state. Joseph Smith had very little uh, ability to do much other than to keep Mr. Bennett at a distance and uh, to allow Mr. Bennett to continue his ways and the political maneuverings until it became too much even for the Relief Society. And I will show you, it was the Relief Society who had, who had the trial and John C. Bennett had to plead his case in front of the women. The women were the judges. Hardly what you find in harem slave polygamy where the women are slaves. They don't stand in judgment of any man, but the women that Joseph Smith promoted to be judges and to have the uh, to have the powers of the Melchizedek priesthood to wash and anoint and to heal the sick. They were also the judges in Israel, USA, Nauvoo. Okay, so George, let's go on. Um, George D. Smith affirmed, one of the instrumental people in the inauguration of Plural Mary was John C. Bennett, and I will contain he was the first and only until the Quorum of the Chal Quorum of the Twelve returned to Nauvoo only after Smith's assassination, and that's when they brought in their form of harem polygamy, and they practiced it openly for two years in Nauvoo before they left for uh, Utah Territory. So, again, if Brigham Young and the Quorum could practice it openly, there was no reason for, as these scholars appear to be assuming without any evidence that if Joseph happened to have introduced it, it would have caused a nightmarish uproar. But of course, it didn't when they assassinated him and they implemented it themselves. Perhaps the assassination scared everybody off and there was no uproar because Emma Smith left. Anybody loyal to Joseph Smith left. They were, had nothing to do with those parties that they considered responsible for the assassination of their husband and their son of Lucy Smith and Hiram Smith. They, Emma, considered Brigham Young responsible for his assassination. And the likely um, contending heir was Samuel Smith, Hiram's uh, child, who was going to be old enough to take over the reins of the church, which just very conveniently, Samuel Smith was poisoned within months of Smith's assassination and Brigham Young's return to Nauvoo. So what form of polygamy did William C. Bennett practice? And that all these contemporary scholars in the Utah Mormon Church hold William C. Bennett as being a confidant of Joseph Smith and being a confidant and being and being informed of Joseph Smith's desire for polygamy. Well, let's look at the form of John, um, John C. Bennett's polygamy. In the history of the saints, Bennett created three different orders in which spiritual wives were ranked in which he called the Grand Lodge or Mormon Seraglio. First were the Cyprian saints 
who wore white veils. The members of the Female Relief Society who are ever upon watch for victims have the power when they know of a suspect that any Mormon female has, however slightly, lapsed from a straight path of virtue is immediate by the council pronounced a Cyprian and is excluded from any further connection with the Relief Society. Her name and failing are stealthily promulgated among the trustworthy members of the church at whose command she is, for licentious purposes, forever after. In other words, he's saying, if any of these females are caught lapsing into sexuality with men, they shall be identified and for the evermore be held in slavery and servitude for licentious purposes for the men to take advantage of. Okay, then we have the second order, the Chamber Sisters of Charity, who were attired in green veils. We have the white veils of the Cyprians, and now we have the green veils of the Sisters of Charity, and we know what charity means. It means love and sexuality, right? Well, according to John C. Bennett, it does. This order comprises a class of females who indulge their sensual propensities without restraint, whether married or single, by the express permission of the prophet. He's referring Prophet Smith. They are much more numerous than the Cyprian saints. This results naturally from the greater respectability of their order. So, Bennett is claiming that Joseph Smith will authorize the sisters, the chamber sisters of charity, who wore green veils, to indulge in their licentious and uh, sexual propensities, with his permission. Then the third the consecratees of the cloistered or cloistered saints, saints wore black. This degree is composed of females, whether married or unmarried, who by the express grant and gift of God through his prophet, the Holy Joe, set apart and consecrated for the use and benefit of a particular individual as secret spiritual wives. There you have it, the secret spiritual wives. When an apostle, high priest, elder, or scribe concedes an affection for a female and he has satisfactorily ascertained that she experiences a mutual flame, he communicates confidently to the prophet his affair du coeur, which means his affair of the heart, and requests him to inquire of the Lord and to allow them to have sexual relationships. Okay, um, it's so ridiculous, it's laughable, but let's see how the church has found itself in quite a bit of hot water because of the records that kept that confused sealing or the uh, celestial ritual of adoption with the sealing of marriage. The two were not the same, and in, put in context, you can see that they are not the same. But however, the church continues to confuse the two, saying sealing for adoption purposes is the same as sealing for marriages. And what does this produce? Well, it doesn't produce harem polygamy. It produces something worse. It produces harem polygamy where men are... are having sexual relations with multiple women and it produces women who are having multiple sexual relations with men in a free love open and I guess they're not worried about um, you know venereal diseases or syphilis which was rampant during this time in uh, the upper classes and the elites in England because they were practicing this free form of sexual license with each other and and syphilis was just raging and killing off a lot of these elite people. So, highly doubtful that this form of polygamy ever existed, but what happens is the church has to agree that if they're going to use the documentation that sealing equals marriage, then Joseph Smith was married not only to single women and virgins and young women, he was married to old ladies who were already married. He, he was married to multiple married women who were living with their husbands. And as um, Mr. Hale and Mrs. Hale state in their scholarly work, there is little evidence that Joseph Smith ever consummated any of these marriages because Joseph Smith was quite virile. And all these women that say that they were married to him, he never produced any children. However, upon Smith's assassination, they quickly married. Like, But when these women finally did marry, 
such as Brigham Young and other apostles, they within months were pregnant and producing children. So if they had been married with sexual relations with Joseph Smith, as Mr. and Mrs. Hale state, uh, there certainly would have been pregnant women, pregnant females who were not married, and this would have caused an outrage, but there is no documentation that this occurred. Okay, let's move on. John C. Bennett's spiritual wife re-allowed a woman to be sexually active with more than one man, thus creating a polyandrous wifery situation. The revelation canonized as the doctrine 132 condemned such relations. Interesting, since Smith engaged in these relations, and then Smith condemns it. Bennett's relations did not obligate the participants to accept famili familial responsibilities. In other words, you can have sex, but you don't have to support anybody or the children, and focus exclusively on the sexual act being through England. These physical unions produced no commitments between the man and the woman. A possible exception is one of Bennett's followers said his spiritual wife, he paid his spiritual wife two dollars after the sexual encounter. Hmm, two dollars, is that all? Uh, and I guess that does not equal, su well, equal support for a week or so. Okay, and their sexual encounter, he was paid his, one of his sexual liaisons two dollars. Like a good prostitute. But how this payment was different from simple prostitution is not clear. Oh, very, very astute, Dr. Hale. To summarize, Joseph Smith knew an everlasting covenant of marriage or order of the priesthood had seven characteristics, none of which Spirit Bennett's wifery system shared. It restored the Old Testament polygamy, was com commanded by the angelic messenger, required a ceremony, required an officiator with a proper priesthood authority, required that both spouses be worthy, established that a husband and wife marriage as an eternal relationship. Bennett's spiritual wifery had four characteristics, four characteristics, none of which overlap with Smith's. I don't know what that proves, a distinction without a difference, because Wikipedia and the church acknowledges that Smith was married to multiple women who were married and uh, polyandry occurred. If the records are to be interpreted as sealing equals marriage, which, according to many, sealing does not equal marriage. It, equ it equals the, the um, law of adoption of family units within the celestial kingdom, and this was the only authorized sealing process in which Joseph Smith married women who were already married. And in fact, John D. Lee uh, states that he understood that Brigham Young authorized his wife to marry, to seal, to be sealed with Joseph Smith and Emma authorized that sealing. There was no sexual relations included and it was a sealing for eternity only. So let's go up here and let's see what happens to Mr. Bennett. But uh, what I'm specifically going to show you is the power of the Relief Society, which Joseph Smith, in his writings, authorized the Relief Society not only to uh, heal the sick, and washings and anointings and a laying on of hands, but he authorized it. Relief Society to be the moral judges of the community. And when John C. Bennett was caught, he had to go plead his case in front of the Relief Society, and his fate was determined by the judges of the Female Relief Society. Hardly an institution of harem of polygamy, in which women are considered slaves with no authority. In Nauvoo, women were the judges and they're the ones that excommunicated this strange harem polygamy of the orders of the veils and the, uh, whatever Cyprian saints the veil green incredible incredible on May 11th notice was printed in the times and seasons of June 15th it reported the subscribers Members of the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints withdraws the hand of fellowship from General John C. Bennett as a Christian. He has been labored with some t from time to time to persuade him to amend his conduct, apparently to no good effect. At this point, all Nauvoo learned that the rumors were true. Apparently, Bennett appeared before the Masonic Lodge the next day. Joseph's journal records, Special Lodge, 
John C. Bennett made a defense for the last time. No commentary is provided explaining why the prophet would have known it was Bennett's last defense, but the statement turned out to be prophetic. There were no additional pleas for leniency and no offerings of forgiveness. Joseph Smith spoke near the temple for the general meeting with many thousands assembled according to Woodruff Wilson, Wilson Wood, Wilford Woodruff. Among other subjects, he spoke his mind with great plainness concerning the iniquity and wickedness of General John Cook Bennett and exposed him before the public. In addition, the very next issue of both Wasp printed and Times and Seasons printed punished the long-standing letter from Joseph Smith entitled To the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and All Honorable pa Part of the Community. Within its contents, the prophet outlined Bennett's history, his moral lapses, and apparently aware of Bennett's inability to strike back on the 26th, Joseph prayed for deliverance from his enemies, including John Bennett. Bennett left Nauvoo abruptly on June 21st and thereafter actively fomented anti-Mormon sentiment throughout Illinois and on the eastern coast. And he fomented a very hot, raging antipathy toward Smith. He, Bennett was accusing Smith of polygamy when, in fact, it is clear that Bennett was the practicer of this strange harem form of polygamy and much. And here is the list of Joseph Smith's quote unquote wives um, listed in Wikipedia, which has been listed in Wikipedia as a result of authorized Mormon records that um, Emma Hell was his first wife, and we all recognize that. Now, this is the one that is so infuriating Fanny Alger, who was a young girl when living with Emma. And Joseph in about 1832, like 14 years before Nauvoo. And um, there was a scandal in which Oliver Cowdery, who became disaffected, accused Joseph Smith of having an affair with this young maid who lived with he and Emma in their house as a maidservant. Well, this was a scandal. And so there was a trial, and Joseph Smith was exonerated, and Oliver Cowdery was exiled and excommunicated for bearing false witness. So the only evidence that Fanny Alger was or had a relationship with Joseph Smith, nothing ever mentioned in documents that there was a marriage, a marriage certificate, a marriage sealing, nothing is that there was a rumor that Joseph Smith might have been having an illicit affair with a young girl living in his house behind his wife's back. That may be some evidence of a philanderer, but as far as a polygamous marriage, there is none. There's no documents that say they were married. There's no witnesses that say they saw the marriage. There is just only those who recollected after the fact, 40, 50 years after the fact, that they think that Fanny Alger was married in a polygamous marriage to Joseph Smith, even though nobody had ever heard of this new ritual called polygamy at all, and there's no writings. So then we have in 19th century Mormons in the Utah Territory. Now remember, they're in the Utah Territory years after Smith's dead, uh, and these are people that are practicing polygamy in Utah, they recall conveniently and um, that uh, they believe that Fanny Alger is Joseph Smith's wife. However, these recollections are inadmissible, unreliable hearsay because there is nothing to support these rumors. And there is nothing that supports any religious ritual of marriage other than perhaps a rumored affair. So how you turn an affair into a polygamous marriage is beyond me, especially when there are no witnesses. But later on, 
uh, some people who are trying to promote polygamy contact Fanny Alger after she has married and has several children and asked her if she was the polygamous wife of Joseph Smith and Fanny Alger just stated to them it is my own business and I have no comment to give you so notwithstanding n no evidence Fanny Alger once again is listed as the first polygamous wife all right what evidence is admissible that Fanny Alger was or wasn't a polygamous wife of Joseph Smith well my goodness there was a trial and the verdict of the trial was Joseph Smith was not practicing polygamy and Oliver Caldery bore false witness that is admissible evidence and it proves Joseph Smith was not married to Fanny Alger and was not practicing polygamy in 1832 so the rest of the wives that are listed at about 33 these lists is the same issue it's based on recollections of people who are practicing polygamy in Utah now re-remembering oh yes Joseph Smith did practice polygamy oh and by the way seven years after his death we just happened to find a revelation from Joseph Smith but no chain of custody no um, no witnesses to it other than uh, people just saying oh yeah they saw it that's not an exception to the hearsay rule because it has to be a business record done in the normal order of business it can't just be people saying oh yeah I witnessed it or I saw that that is not considered foundation for any document that could have been forged and especially one that could have been forged seven eight years and used as some kind of proof to encourage other people to practice polygamy suffers from not only hearsay flaw but bias and unreliability and uh, just all sorts of things and of course if these members of polygamous sect in Utah are going to accuse Joseph Smith of practicing polygamy in secret well it's obvious Joseph Smith is a liar because if he practiced it in secret he's a liar so why would a liar be a prophet well according to these Brighamites you can lie for the Lord so when who's lying is it the Brighamite polygamous practicers in Utah who conveniently left Nauvoo and conveniently Joseph Smith who opposed it publicly all of his life and even excommunicated people who were trying to secretly practice polygamy I would say people that are more prone to lie are those who are trying to promote their idea that polygamy should be practiced and the only evidence we have that's reliable is is Joseph Smith's absolute statements and the fact he excommunicated in the course of church business to polygamous John C Bennett and uh, Olney within two years of his own death he excommunicated people who were sec secretly practicing polygamy now the problem with this list again is that the church finds itself in a quandary is a ceiling a marriage or is it a marriage a ceiling well if a ceiling is a marriage then all these women who were married at the time were practicing polyandry with Joseph Smith and I don't see any revelation authorizing polyandry I only see a revelation in which Joseph Smith screams and threatens that Emma will die in hell and and uh, women must become virgins and obey their husbands well there is nothing authorizing these innumerable innumerable marriages by women at who are married at the same time and then marrying in secret other men such as Joseph Smith and even Brigham Young so the church finds itself in an impossible situation they can't explain the polyandry because there's no revelation authorizing polyandry they sensible and most reasonable explanation is the sealing um, doctrine the sealing ritual was independent and different from celestial marriages between monogamous couples which Joseph Smith promoted openly until his death monogamy 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 
And so we go on down, and anybody that says they married and actually had relations with Joseph Smith, these are all done out of Utah, and years after the death, and these are all polygamous wives that are uh, making these claims, unreliable, and with no documents uh, supporting it, it would have very little weight in a court of law. So look at all these women. Most of them were married only for eternity. Very little evidence that he, Joseph Smith, had any sexual relations. In fact, most of these women went on to marry Brigham Young and have sexual relationship with Brigham Young and have his babies, and so therefore had every incentive under the iron hand of Brigham Young to bear a false witness and to create these affidavits that are absolutely without foundation and probably and inaccurate. Now, again, the only affidavits we have accusing Joseph Smith at the time came from William Law, the Law Brothers, who, on the assassination of Joseph Smith, immediately started practicing, practicing polygamy. Oh my goodness, what a moral outrage. They accused him of, of practicing polygamy and therefore assassinated or at least jailed. Well, they go right along and practice polygamy.